Welcome to Betting Big. I'm Vaughn Delzell. That is Eric Froton. We are covering all the Big Ten college football bowl season games, starting with the Las Vegas Bowl on Saturday, December 23rd. Eric, where you just were, saw two great games. And uh, this is Utah versus Northwestern. The total sitting around 41 and a half. And Utah struggled on offense and wrote a neutral field games this year, Eric. But the defense is top 10 in rush defense and third down defense. Kind of looking towards an under here, but I'm going to pass on this game. What do you like? Yeah, with Utah, Jonah Ellis, their defensive lineman, is out. He's NFL opting out, most likely. And as is their quarterback, Bryson Barnes. He is in the portal, which means Luke Batari, who is their number four QB, you know, if we're counting camera rising, uh, entering the season, he will be starting last time. Uh, he actually started against Colorado, a 23 to 17 game. Utah ran the ball 53 times for 268 yards. They only threw 10 passes for 61 yards with Batari showing that they just don't trust him trying to advance the ball with the forward pass through the air. On the other side, Northwestern, uh, very few impact portal decisions, and their head coach, uh, David Braun, has been retained in a non-interim basis. He is now the permanent guy. And when it comes to Northwestern, pretty simple. I mean, pretty rough offense, 127th in rushing, 108th in terms of pass offense. Defensively, uh, that's really what their kind of, you know, identity is, 30, 30 in yards per pass allowed. With the Northwestern Wildcats, won three of their last four games, but of their wins, three of them were actually with sub-20% win expectancies, all right? Ooh. And that was against Minnesota and Purdue. Those are the last two games they played. I'm a little nervous about Northwestern's mm-hmm. ability to score. I'm taking the under here with these two offenses that are struggling. Yeah, out of all the units on the field in that game, I trust Utah's defense the most. And Northwestern's defense, we don't know what we're getting from them week to week, Eric, but they are top 25 in pass defense. So with Utah on a fourth stringer, I think the under is the best look. So we are aligned there. Let's head over to the quick lane bowl. Tuesday, December 26th, day after Christmas. We got to spend grandma's lunch money somehow. Uh, We got Bowling Green versus Minnesota. Tuttle sitting at 38, and I'm going under in this game, Eric, because Minnesota has struggled. They lost their quarterback, Calicomanis, to the portal. They've scored 14 or fewer in half of their games this season. And for Bowling Green, they have Connor Bazelak. All right, he's a former SEC and Big Ten quarterback. And the Falcons, their defense looked pretty strong in five of their seven wins, holding teams at 19 or fewer. So the only way I could look is an under. But if you're trying to get some lunch money here, I think Bowling Green can win this game. Yeah, and with Bowling Green, keep in mind, they beat Georgia Tech earlier in the season with a 93% win expectancy. They've also won five of their last six games. So it's clear which team has a little bit of the momentum coming in. But as a MAC team playing up against a Big Ten team, now fortunately, as you mentioned, Athen Athen Kaliak Manis is out. Cole Kramer is in, Seinfeld's neighbor. Uh, Minnesota (laughs) lost their last four to Wisconsin, Ohio State, Purdue, and Illinois. They are terrible offensively, 115th in yards per play, but not too good on D either. You know, 96th in EPA, 98th in yards per play. As stated, you know, it's it's a four-point spread here. I can't take I, – I, I'm feeling like a gambler. I like Bowling Green. Give me the points. And as you mentioned, the under as well. You, you, I can't see an overscript in this game. Yeah, Minnesota has been an under team all season for us. We're going to keep riding that train one final last time. And I'm glad we're aligned with the action stepping up. Uh, you got to represent. So let's see if they do that there in that game. And the pinstripe bowl, Eric, I'm pretty interested in Rutgers versus Miami. This game's Thursday, December 28th. Miami is a slight favorite of three and a half points. To- total sitting at 41 and a half. And I can only look at the under in this game as well. I hate to keep running it back here, but you're talking about a Rutgers offense with Gavin Winstat that I don't think they can score more than two touchdowns in this game. Miami's held six out of seven opponents at 23 or fewer points in their wins during regulation this year. And Tyler Van Dyke, he's probably one of the best quarterbacks that Rutgers will see all season. But to be honest with you, that Scarlet Knights defense, top 11 in red zone defense and pass defense, I'm not sleeping on them either. So I got to go under once again. Yeah, well, Ja'Curry Brown will be starting a quarterback for Miami, Tyler Van Dyke, in the portal. And with Miami, you know, Love their that. last for the last five games, they had a win expectancy of 27% or less. The only one that they actually cleared that was BC in their last game, where they destroyed a completely inept Boston College team. Now, they're going to be losing Cam Kitchens, James Williams, uh, Leonard Taylor. They're all opt-outs or injuries on defense. 
So that is three of their key players are going to be out. But over on the other side with Rutgers, 121st in yards per pass offensively. Ooh, 111th in EPA. Yikes, 105th in defensive success rate. But they are really good in terms of their pass defense, 13 in yards per pass. So where you have a Miami team that's, I mean, they're going to have to rely on the run. They have a third string quarterback in their starting uh, and Rutgers playing, you know, pretty damn good defense with head coach Greg Schiano. I yeah. like the under as well. And I'm leaning and taking the points with Rutgers here. I'm always looking to, to find a reason to take an underdog in bowl season. Yeah. And Shiano is a great coach as well. And like I said, the best unit on that field is probably going to be that Rutgers defense. But the fact that Van Dyke did hit the portal, he's not going to play. Oh, my God. Yeah, Eric, give me the under. Uh, more in love with that one. So we are aligned once again. Let's get a different. Let's hopefully get a different pick here. I'm going to tell you my pick and tell me where you're leaning because the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is something that's going to be a magnificent game. It's Saturday, December 30th, Ole Miss versus Penn State. The Nittany Lions are the favorites in this game, laying four and a half points and a total of 49 and a half. I uh, hate to be that guy again, but I like the under. Eileen, Penn State, James Franklin and company are going to come to play. I think this is a game that they're going to come with the intention of winning. And Old Miss and their two losses, while I've liked Jackson Dark, that offense only averaged or scored 17 or fewer in their two losses this year and struggled to pass the ball. Penn State has one of those top five defenses, and uh, I think that they can hold Old Miss to a minimal here. So I'm either going to take the Old Miss team total under, depending on what that opens at, or I'm going to take the game total under, but I think Penn State should win this game, Eric. How do you feel about the Nittany Lions? Yeah, well, keep it in mind with Ole Miss, too. They had real problems on their offensive line all season. You know, it's it's be it attrition or just ineffective play. And now they have to go and deal with Penn State. I'm really curious to see who, you know, does Chop Robinson play? You know, does, does Camp King, does he play on the outside there at, at cornerback? Like, who is opting out and who isn't for, you know, that Penn State defense, of course. But – you know, offensively, they fired their offensive coordinator, Mike Yurcich. Uh, You know, there's certainly been some uh, disarray there over there in Happy Valley. So if I had to go and pick a particular, you know, one of these teams, I don't really have a, a strong play, but I do lean Penn State. Yeah, I think the Big Ten can get a victory here. We've liked a lot of the uh, the underdogs, but I think the favor would be the play. Old Miss – Scored 28 or fewer points in four of their last seven against much better competition. Penn State will be the best defense they've probably seen in a while. Uh, for the Music City Bowl, also same day, December 30th on Saturday, Maryland versus Auburn. We got the Tigers as favorite. Another Big Ten underdog here. Uh, total sitting around 50 and a half. Now, Maryland has won two straight bowl games. Uh, so getting the underdog tag is a bit surprising. But Auburn, a team that did not finish the season strong whatsoever, lost two straight to New Mexico State in Alabama. Uh, I'm looking at the Terps here as a live underdog. Do you like them too, Eric? Yo, know, with Auburn, you know, just a terrible, terrible pass offense we've seen all year. You know, they, yeah. they had to rely on the run with Peyton Thorne and, and Robbie Ashford really struggling to move the ball through the air. And with their wins, I mean, look who they beat. UMass, Cal, Samford, not Stan, Samford, Mississippi State, <laughs> Vandy, and Arkansas. Just not a real big quality win in, in the group. They lost to Mexico State. And then on the other side with Maryland, you know, they're, they're kind of underrated defensively, frankly. 21st in yeah. yard per pass, 33rd in EPA. You know, that's pretty damn good. 36 against the run, 33rd against the pass. You know, pretty, pretty balanced team in that respect. Started 5-0, and obviously did not finish very well. Finished 2-5. and their best win, I would say, would probably be Rutgers, which was you know the final week of the season. And they their last three games, they played well, won two of them, and the loss was a forty five percent win expectancy against Michigan. They played Michigan as well as anybody yeah. you know all year, frankly. So um, I'm going to take the points, give me the two and a half, and I'm going to ride Maryland against a listless Auburn team. Yeah, I love this. Since COVID, Maryland's been one of the Big 10 teams that have improved drastically each season. Like I said, winning two straight bowl games since COVID. I think they can make it three straight too, Eric. So I'm with you on the Terps here. Uh, Auburn's kind of a letdown team. And for ReliQuest Bowl, uh, New Year's Day on Monday, Wisconsin versus LSU. Jaden Daniels and the Tigers are highly favored in this game. We're seeing 10s or higher everywhere with a total uh, that was 55 and a half, sitting solid. Does Daniels play, in your opinion? Does he need to play? And if he does, what does that do to this line? I wouldn't play if I'm J if I'm Daniels <laughs> yeah. personally, especially considering how relatively thin he is. You know his frame. He goes and he rolls out and takes a hit. 
you know, and, and absorbs that. Like, I, you, you don't want to do that to yourself. You know what I mean? So I, I would personally advise him to not play. Uh, that being said, you know, we know what LSU is. They're a horrible, horrible defense. Everybody knows it. I don't even have to get into the numbers around the 126 in EPA allowed, which is brutal. But they're first in points per game. You know, they beat A&M, they beat Florida, Mizzou, Auburn. And the losses, Ole Miss, Florida State, Bama. You know, like those, how can you really have a problem with any of those teams? And then with Wisconsin, just just a terrible passing offense, which, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, that would, uh, that would help this terrible LSU pass defense. So I, I'm curious to see what happens in, in that particular matchup. But um, sub-30% win expectancy in six of their last seven games have not played particularly well. You know, in terms of uh, Wisconsin, lost to Iowa, Wazoo, Indiana, Northwestern. I mean, these aren't big, scary teams that this first-year Luke Fickle team is, is kind of, you know, losing to here. I like the over in this script because LSU's defense is so bad. Even if yeah. Neusmeyer is – Garrett Neusmeyer is starting a quarterback, he's very capable. Uh, I'm going to go with the over here. Yeah, you may be getting a deal on Wisconsin plus 10 if Daniels decides not to play, but I think LSU is more than capable of winning this game. Their talent level is much more superior than what Wisconsin has. Uh, so let's move on to the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Missouri versus Ohio State. The Buckeyes were three to three and a half point favorites. Now they're only laying a point and a half. The total sitting at 49 and a half. And this, Eric, is my favorite Big Ten underdog. Or excuse me, it's not even a Big Ten underdog. Favorite Big Ten team to fade because I think – Ohio State will end up being underdog here. I'm taking Missouri Tigers. This is their Super Bowl. Uh, now, Ohio State, we're not sure exactly who's going to be in for them because a lot of players will opt out for the transfer portal because they'll get a lot of money or they'll go to the NFL where they'll also get a lot of money. Uh, but for Missouri, this is a team that went 6-6 six and six the past two years. They made bowl games the both years. They lost to Wake Forest and they lost to Army. This is the biggest game, arguably, in their entire college program. Uh, so I'm taking Missouri. I think they've gotten dramatically better this year. And the passing offense is something not to sleep on with Brady Cook. Yeah, with, with Ohio State, too, you have to remember, it's the motivation factor here. Like, this is a team that thought they were going to be in the CFP playoff again yeah. and losing to Michigan. You know, they're they're in a tailspin. They're starting quarterbacks now in the transfer portal. You know, their coach is not giving him a, a vote of confidence. Uh, so we're going to get Devin Brown, whether we like it or not. And that ought to be mm -hmm. interesting. Like you said, Mizzou, this is one of the biggest games in the history of this school. Eli Drinkwitz is standing on business. And like you're saying, it's a big motivation play. I also think we get some opt-outs from Oklahoma, excuse me, Ohio State too. Trevion, Egbuka, Marvin, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sawyer, Tuipolatu, however you say that name. Um we could see a very drastically different Ohio state by the time this rolls around with the portal and all that stuff. I'm taking Missouri. Yeah. I, I love that play. I think that they win this game outright and, you know, Ohio state, they have lost a few bowl games that have been higher scoring. If this one gets into, you know, the fifties or sixties, I think that definitely helps Missouri with Ohio state having the backup quarterback. Uh, and for the cheese at bowl, Eric, January 1st, I'm super excited to watch this one because it's Tennessee versus Iowa. My two of my favorite teams to bet this year. And we got the Vols laying a hefty, Seven to seven and a half at most places. The total's dropping from 37 down to 35 and a half. You already know I took the under in this game because not only will I never stop riding the Iowa unders, uh, I also like Tennessee's defense. They've been far better th than they were the past few seasons. And Joe Milton's not a guy that I'm trusting uh, against Iowa's defense. But I've been talking about Deacon Hill so much, Eric, that I'm going to be an uncle today. And my girlfriend called uh, my sister's boyfriend, Deacon. His name's Dayon. She called him Deacon oh, today. Man. And I, she said, where have I heard that name? I said, because of Deacon Hill, baby. That's the my guy. Deacon energy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going under. Neither quarterback will touch 200 yards in this game easily. Yeah. Well, Tennessee, man, they scored 17 combined points against UGA and Mizzou over the course of the past month of the season. 20 points versus Alabama and uh, Texas A&M, 16 against Florida. Like, this isn't the prolific Josh Heupel offense led by Hendon Hooker last year. So we got to remember that. Also, you have two starting DBs are in the portal for Tennessee. That is a big factor with Iowa, just a depleted defensive back, you know, core. Cooper DeGene out. 
Diaz Fernandez is in the portal. 133 in EPA and success rate offensively. They are horrible. We know it. It's practically a meme at this point. Uh, signature wins Wisconsin. I'll tell you, as discussed, this opened to 37 and a half. I, I, you know, 36 and a half is where it was when I was capping this. I, I, you have to go under, right? You can't yeah. take an over position on this Iowa Tennessee game. Give me that under. Yeah, and the best quality about Tennessee's defense, rush defense is top 25 this year. That's all Iowa relies on when it comes to offense. So uh, Deacon Hill is a household name if you follow NBC Sports, and uh, he will continue to be at least for one more day. Uh, college football semifinal, the Rose Bowl, Pasadena. We got Michigan and Alabama, one versus four. The Wolverines did open up as two and a half or three point favorites. Now they're only a one point favorite. Total sitting at 45 and a half, which has also dropped down two points. Eric, what do you like in this game? Are we still yelling go blue? Or are you switching sides on me? Well, hey, look, I've been a lot more neutral with Michigan than you have. You know, you've been leading the entire bandwagon there with the Michigan fans, which I have no problem with. I get it. Um, but yeah, gosh, this game, which I hopefully will be in attendance for, is one of the true games of the year. What more could you want? Alabama, Michigan. I mean, I have, I have to say, I, I lean Michigan, but I wish I could have got that three points on Bama. I, I would have loved to have gotten a field goal in this game in, in what I consider to be just a very tightly contested contest. Um, I lean Michigan. I lean over in terms of the game, you know, the points. I hope you're not going to take the Alabama team total under. Again, I, they could score a lot more points than you think this year. You've been taking the team total every week. Vaughn, but uh, yeah. I do I do have a lean on Michigan here, but I'm just excited. I just want to see this game. What what a game! What more could we ask for? Yeah, no, I, I agree. This is the you know the best draw they probably could have had for an inter- entertainment standpoint. And uh, you know you saw the Michigan when they announced they're going to be playing Alabama. Michigan didn't seem excited, uh, but you know if Alabama was picking who they were playing, I don't think they would have picked Michigan either. They would not, Eric, no, uh, yeah. no, this is going to be a draw and one to remember a defensive a defensive battle between these two. And uh, Jim Harbaugh, Nick Saban, all that you could imagine. I think that Michigan does win this game. I do agree. I think this is a a two, three, four point type of game, 24, 20, 28, 24 type of game here. Uh, so, I mean, the only difference for me is I think Michigan's defense is more trustworthy than Alabama's. And I think J.J. McCarthy can make more plays with his arm uh, than Jalen Milrow can, unless we're talking about 40, 50 yard bombs. And Milrow is the best in college Milrow football, Eric. Bombs. I can't. I can't ignore that. I can't ignore that. So it's been great talking to you. Hopefully we'll see each other in Pasadena for Michigan, Alabama. I'll be wearing blue. You'll be wearing red. Classic L.A. battle between two groups. All right. It's Vaughn Delzone, Eric Proton, betting big with BetMGM. We'll see you next time. Enjoy bowl season.